Thank you for joining us for From Idea to Implementation, a Ranked Choice Voting and Voting Systems Symposium. Our eighth session, Voting Systems and RCV Capabilities, as presented by Election System and Software, will begin shortly. My name is Karen Brinson Bell. I am a member of the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center consulting team, and I will be your moderator for this session. A few housekeeping matters are needed before we get started. Participants have been muted for this webinar to reduce audio interference since we have a large number of attendees. If you have technical issues, please use the question option to send a message to the organizer so we may try to assist. If you have a question or a comment regarding the session, please type that message in the question box. Session six will be about 20 minutes, followed by a brief question and answer period. Questions we are unable to address during this live session will be answered in a follow-up document, which we will email to attendees and also post with a recording of this session on the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center website within a couple of weeks of the symposium. Now let's welcome Chris Rohde, intern with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center and FairVote, to introduce our first voting system, or to introduce our voting system vendor. Thank you, Karen. For those that are not familiar with Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, we provide a compilation of best practices and firsthand experiences from jurisdictions that have used this method of voting with a focus on election administrations, since that is our background. Our website, www.rankedchoicevoting.org, and the overall project serve as resources for voters, election administrators, policymakers, candidates, and others. The Resource Center continues to evolve, as does Ranked Choice Voting. Both have gone from idea to implementation, and we hope these resources and sessions help you and others improve our democracy and the conduct of elections. Paige Richborg is product, uh, product manager for software with election systems and software. She will share the company's voting system and its capabilities for Ranked Choice Voting. Election systems and software, or ESNS, is an international corporation that provides voting machine equipment and services to jurisdictions around the world. ESNS is based out of Omaha, Nebraska, and has been active since 1979. I'll now turn the presentation over to Paige to tell us more about ESNS and its voting system. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here and to present our ranked choice voting solutions. My name is Paige Richborg, and I am, like you said, the software product manager for election systems and software for, I'm surprised to say, but 20 years now working with election software. I began in technical support and have likely spoken with many of you who have been around for a little while. Now that I'm in product management, I get to take all of your great ideas your innovative requests and continue to push our very driven and very passionate development team to, to strive for more building better election processes that are innovative and helpful for our very diverse set of customers like many of you. ESNS supports nearly 100 million registered voters and with we have 17 voting systems certified with the Election Assistance Commission, also known as the EAC. Uh, ESNS offers the most technically advanced paper-based election solutions. My teammates and I, as well as all of you, have a basic question before us. How do we improve voter confidence? And the right answers require collaboration between us and um, all of you in the election community, which is why I'm very eager to, to join you today. ESNS is committed to raising the bar for higher quality products and services. And one of our company values that I love is to dream big. And in the past two years, we have built new innovative products, one of which I'm honored to get to share with you today. With the ever evolving market needs, such as ranked choice voting, our system is purpose-driven and designed to fulfill election laws across multiple states. We have supported various ranked choice voting elections, such as Minneapolis, Hennepin, Tacoma Park, Maryland, 
And we're excited to be preparing for the upcoming Maine primary, which will use ranked choice voting in their governor race and other races in this upcoming June. I'm honored to get to work with over 450 passionate and knowledgeable election professionals who have stood for over 35 years behind the quality of our voting machines and software, and we continue to strive to provide innovative solutions. Like another one of the panelists shared yesterday, uh, ESNS stands neutral on the topic of ranked choice voting. However, we are dedicated to direct requests from our customers to support this election capability. Our goal is better elections every day. As previously mentioned by another panelist, the development of our cast vote record export in our electionware software has significantly improved this process. Today I'm going to be talking with you about our electionware software, but mostly our new express runoff software, which was recently developed. We, in this past two years have, have been very exciting for us. Our new electionware software, which actually has been around for 10 years, <laughs> um, it, we have developed a reporting and adjudication results software module within the suite, and I wish I had more time to talk with you about that, but you can feel free to contact me if you'd like to learn more about it. I'm mostly proud of the, the steps we've taken in a, to create what we call express runoff, and this software performs the algorithms required for ranked choice voting and produces reports showing a round-by-round -round example of the full process. This software will be used in Maine and has been demonstrated to various customers and state election officials. When it comes to our ballot layout, uh, ESNS ballot layout is very flexible. We have many options to lay out your ballots that adhere to ranked choice voting needs. Ballots can share both ranked choice voting contests along with non-ranked choice voting contests. You can have one or multiple contests that are RCV. The layout can be created in landscape mode or portrait format. Your ovals can be displayed on the left or on the right. Uh, all of these are options within our software and Com completely configurable by the jurisdiction, or we can help you with that. And, and we provide templates that make it easier from election to election to set up the ballot in the way that your jurisdiction requires. As you can see here, there are some examples of some different ballots, um, different layouts. And again, they can be set up in many different ways to include your your ranked choice voting contest as you need them. The only limitation is how many columns or rows you can fit on the ballot. Uh, our ballot sizes range from eight and a half by 11 to eight and a half by 14 or 17 inch or 19 inch. And these are both in portrait mode, but as I said, they could be displayed in landscape. Recently, we created a new flexible grid layout and in that template, you can set up the ballot in a more grid style format. This was to benefit our New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and surrounding state customers. But it also really plays well with our ranked choice voting races. And in this new grid style, you can set up offices as columns or as rows. So the choice is yours on your ballot design. Very flexible. Now, as results are brought into the system, we create a cast vote record export, and that is able to show your first choice, as you can see in this example here, your second choice is exactly how each and every voter has allocated their choices. And each line represents a voter. And so our system will export this file and you can use this to import this data into our new Express Runoff software. 
This new software is designed to be very simple and yet flexible for you, your needs, configurable based on your jurisdiction uh, ordinances and, and configurations. Basically, you are able to import the CVR data and generate your reports. And while it's generating the reports, it is providing the algorithm to enable the, the round by round ranking. Here's a sample of the report that's generated and it shows a round by round how the votes are transferred. And in the rare event that there is a tie, Here's an example. The, the system will prompt you, the election official, to specify who will be eliminated. As one of the panelists mentioned yesterday, this could be by a coin toss or a random draw, and the report will reflect the tie-breaking choice based on your jurisdiction ordinances. Uh, often, bulk elimination will cut down on the need for these kind of ties that can happen, but we do support bulk elimination. It's also called batch elimination. So if there are two or more candidates in the first round, which are mathematically impossible to be elected, then they will be eliminated in the first round as a batch. And this can also cut down on the amount of rounds that you need to review. So I actually have a demonstration that I'm gonna to switch to. And this is our new software. Like I said, it's very simple. You can browse to the cast vote record file, and I've got one. Got an election here for a mayor, and I will select that and import the file. Shouldn't take too long. This data has about 50,000 cast vote records, and you can customize your reports by entering your election name, your election date, and I'm going to add mayor here. You can specify where you want the results to be placed, and then go ahead and hit generate report, and it will go by round by round. If there is a tie, it will ask you which candidate should be eliminated. And then we can take a look. As it creates these files, we provide a timestamp within the file so that there's complete transparency as you're building your ranked choice voting uh, round by round tabulation. This way, also, you don't erroneously overwrite one of the previous runnings of the software. And this is, one moment. I'm going to freeze this, if it'll let me. Okay, it's not letting me freeze it. Anyway, so here is our report and we've designed it to be in an Excel spreadsheet so that you have a full display of round by round how the votes are being transferred from one candidate to the next in this initial round. The the vote votes for Jim Shorts were the had the least amount of votes and all 3,814 3, of his votes were reallocated, and you can see exactly how they were reallocated. And you'll notice in the blue, we show who the highest number of votes, who received the highest number of votes, and then from round to round, it shows you how many ballots are exhausted by overvotes, undervotes, and exhausted choices entirely. We provide information on the winning threshold and how that will, gets reallocated from round to round as the number of ballots increase from round to round in terms of ballots exhausted. And in the end, 
it, it comes down to the final two winners and you're able to see exactly the percentages as well as the number of ballots exhausted by overvotes, undervotes, and exhausted choices. So the software is designed to create that transparency from round to round. We are excited to, to be able to be using this in uh, places like Maine, as well as we've demonstrated this to various Secretary of State offices so that we're able to introduce this new portion of our software that supports even more ranked choice voting options for you. Uh, I am running short on time, so I want to thank Karen and George and Gary and, and the Bright Spots team. Um, for I've enjoyed being able to work with them on their universal RCV tabulator and, and look forward to their presentation. I am curious if you have questions on our offerings. We do have a few questions that have come in, Paige, and I'm going to start with two that we've been asking each vendor. Um, if you have multiple ranked choice voting contests on the ballot, how is tabulation managed? Great question, and each and every contest currently is being tallied separately, your first choice versus second choice. Within our reporting software, you can decide which choices, typically the first, you would want to display in reports, but they are all tabulated um, together. And you can have uh, all or some of the contests appear on your reports. You can um, have ranked choice voting contests in the same ballot as non-ranked choice voting. That was actually one of our other questions, so uh, I'm glad you touched on that. So there is the ability to have ranked choice contests and non-ranked choice on the same ballot. Can they be on the same side of the ballot or do they have to be on separate sides? The, the layout of the columns typically will look better if they're on separate sides, but we could work with the jurisdiction if they need to, to on how to um, display the ballot that will work for them. Okay. Uh, back to the tabulation part, can your ranked choice voting tabulation module that you now have uh, or are in, we're showing us, can it be used to tabulate vote records from any of your legacy systems as well? So I, I appreciate you saying that. We have designed it so that it works for all of our new EVS systems. These have been um, certified for, for the past five years. Uh, actually, the software has been around for 10 years, but the, our previous Unity versions do not have that cash vote record export. But the software is designed to actually work with all of our electionware users. Okay. And we are getting quite many questions, so you are a popular person today. This question comes out of Minnesota, which, uh, you know, there's several jurisdictions that use ranked choice voting or have recently adopted it. Um, so when did the express runoff software become available? Is there an added cost to a jurisdiction that already has ES and S equipment? And can the setup be according to the rules of the specific jurisdiction? So three-part question there. Great question. So this new software is um, recently, this project was recently completed and it is right now being geared towards a couple of our um, prominent needs. I know in Minnesota, the next one will be in 2021. So we will be adding more capabilities for multi-seat right now. The software is, used for single seat ranked choice voting. It's a great place to start and most widely used. So we, we started with the happy path and most widely used configurations. And um, this, the in terms of pricing, I would encourage anyone to contact us and we can work with you on that because it is a new product. 
um, please feel free to contact us. And what was the third question? Can it be set up to the rules according to a specific jurisdiction? As you know, the yes. the rules apply differently in different jurisdictions. Yes, it uh, it does have a configuration uh, right now. Maine has a different skipped ranking than our default. Um, right now, our default in terms of skipped rankings, uh, it will. Um, for example, if a voter skips the first choice and marks the second choice, then their second choice is used for the first round. Um, but in places like Maine, if there are multiple skips, then those are not allowed. And so we have that built in as a configuration. And the nice thing about this software is that it is able to grow and expand with the number of different jurisdiction laws and ordinances that are out there. Okay, so you're That's able to goal. you're able to configure that for the tabulation purposes. What about the inter the interface with the voters? Does does it does the system alert the voting equipment itself alert the voter in any way? Sure. If they've skipped or overvoted. Right. So each and every contest within our system offers the ability if you configure it based on your settings to alert the voter or reject if they've um, overvoted. Uh, the option is yours as well as the wording within the system. So, and overvotes can be configured one way, undervotes another if need be. Undervotes can be configured on a contest by contest basis so that you're not slowing down your uh, vote lines. Uh, so that is completely configurable. Okay. We've got a couple of questions pertaining to the uh, the winning threshold. You had indicated mm -hmm. when you were showing the spreadsheet that the threshold changed with each round. So someone's asking about, you know, why does that happen and can the winning threshold be kept consistent? So we've, that those are two questions that came in um, but pertain to the same subject. Okay. Um, so what we found with our research and in, in creating this product was we talked with various ranked choice voting officials and we looked through different ordinances and we found that, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet here, that the continuing ballots, those that are not exhausted, are typically used to be able to determine your winning threshold. So, uh, for example, a ballot that is got a, a true overvote um, if if that if that will not uh, be used in in terms of reallocating the votes and transferring the votes to the next ballot those ballots are what we call exhausted and those ballots are not used to to determine the threshold so this was based on our research uh, can this be changed? Most certainly. Uh, this software is very flexible and so it can, um, I, I'd be curious to find out more on, on your needs if, if you have different rules about that. We can certainly give you the, the follow-up contact information and, and wonderful include, as we, when we conclude. Uh, from our administrator in Benton County, Oregon, actually. We, I don't know if this is, this is part question, but it may be part idea to share with you. Uh, is it an option to have separate contest rules display on separate tabs within the same spreadsheet or do they appear on the same tab? Wonderful question from Benton, Oregon, who we've, we've been working with on this. So I, I give him a lot of credit for the, um, helpful suggestions so far, that's another good one. Uh, right now, our cast vote record export is actually, um, we our first round here is that you do one race at a time, and we do that so that you can uh, keep your results consolidated for, for each and every 
um, race. In this example, it's a mayor one. But I like that idea of having another tab for a different race. And we can certainly put that on our product roadmap. We are, are this ranked choice voting options are, are growing. And um, I can certainly contact Benson about that idea. I love it. Great. Um, I think that's one of the best part about the symposium is that we're generating ideas, whether it be for Definitely. the vendors or for us or for you know, voter education, different things like that. So thank you. Um, talk a little bit about where you are in the certification process. And that's actually coming out of Minnesota as well. I think they're hoping since you've got a customer in St. Louis Park that this might be available for 2019. Um, so if you could talk about the certification process. Oh, sure. So all of our systems go through EAC certification. Now, this express runoff is a utility outside of our EVS, our election voting system. So we will be putting this new software through uh, Vista Lab testing, but it is outside of the EAC certification at this point. So uh, right now, all of our systems create the cast vote records that are needed to, to be run with the express runoff, you can um, use any of our systems for ranked choice voting at this point within the um, election war suite. Okay. And to that, I, there's a follow-up question. When do you expect certification completion of the tabulation software? I don't, I don't know if there's a different answer to that or, or what right. you just that is, said. That is still to be determined at this point but we can share that once okay. we have more details on that. Great. Uh, also, would you scroll to the right of this current screen? Sure. I think there may be another question coming from Benton County, Oregon, once he's able to see this. Um, and while he does that... Do I need to make it bigger? I'm not sure. <laughs> that is one difficulty of the way we're having to conduct the question and answer part, but uh, hopefully that helps and we'll see if he has another question. In the meantime, we've encouraged the the voting equipment vendors to just give us some uh, overview of, of just their products. Um, we've got some folks who are joining us that aren't at aren't utilizing RCV yet, but are, are interested in what the different vendors have to offer in terms of voting equipment and, and voting systems and accessibility um, units. Sure. Well, I would encourage you to go to our website at www.essvote.com. There is a whole section on um, our products, um, one in particular that we're very proud of is our express vote, which is our ADA option that provides a, a paper-based uh, and also touchscreen-based uh, marker so that you are able to uh, mark your ballot and actually verify your votes. There are uh, a number of different product slicks available on our, our different options. so feel free to go to www.essvote.com. Great. And it looks like being able to see that last screen was helpful for the folks out in Oregon. Oh, I can go back. So no follow-up <laughs> questions to that. Um, and we have pretty much reached the end of our time. If you have other questions for Paige or representatives from ESNS, please uh, send those to us. We will be doing follow-up documents with all of our presentations, including the ones with the vendors. And Paige, we appreciate the shout out that you gave for the Universal Tabulator. One of the, the goals for the Resource Center has been to work with the vendors and, and help overcome that hurdle of tabulation that um, has been, you know, prohibitive of some uh, jurisdictions to actually implement. And we appreciate getting to work with you and, and hope we can provide that same service to other vendors if, if need be or if, if they desire. So. Um, with that, thank you. It has it has been wonderful to get to work with y'all as well. Thank you. 
We very much appreciate it. Um, and with that, I'll just say thank you again, Paige, and to ESNS, and most importantly to our attendees for joining us for this session. And as mentioned before, we will work with ESNS to provide answers to any questions we could not get to during this session. The document will be posted along with our recording in the coming weeks on our website, www.rankchoicevoting.org. And I will advance the slide once more so you can see our contact information and information about our social media and podcasts. Please join us for our next session at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time when Dominion Voting Systems will share information about its voting system and RCV capabilities. Until then, thank you and please join us at 2.30.